Good morning. Hello. Hey. Here he is. Welcome. <laughs> Y'all were worried for a minute. Oh, it's her. <laughs> oh, this is my wife, Erica. If you have not met her yet, uh, we're so thankful to have her in our church and our family. And thank you, Julia. Uh, Can I sit on this side this morning? Yeah, that's awesome. Great. Uh, if you haven't met me, I'm Robin. So I'm the senior pastor here at Promise Land, and we're honored to have everybody here with us today. Uh, we're just going to be kind of down home family style. Um, thank you, Pastor Norman, and sorry for your loss. Uh, thank there you. you go. I've asked yeah. Jacob to hang out with us uh, today and just play through the whole thing. Don't we love our worship team? Our band's amazing. Yes, they're um, so good. So good. If you have not received one of these communion uh, cups, raise your hand. Our team will get one to you. And also, we want to make sure that you get sermon notes today. Everybody needs that little half piece of paper. Yes. Uh, Y'all, look at you. You look good. You made it. Congratulations. We're so glad you're here. I just feel overwhelmed with gratitude for our church family. Yeah. <clears throat> for our worship team. Just, I just love it. It just makes me happy. It's good. The Thanksgiving season is here. The, the, the weather's feeling a little more autumn-like, and uh, it's just a really neat time to be around. And so we, ha we may have some people here that are new to our area, or maybe you can't make it home for Thanksgiving. We don't want you to be by yourself. If you'd like, we can uh, connect you with a family here at Promise Land, and you can celebrate Thanksgiving uh, if you want to risk it and go to Norman's house for his first turkey. Uh, <laughs> I actually cooked my first turkey for the first time last year. And uh, it was a little too salty. But other it than was that, tasty, it, was, though. it was good. Yeah, we smoked it. We have so. visitor, our, our visitors that used to be here all the time, Janice yeah. and Daniel. Yeah, we're glad to have you back. Welcome. Welcome back. <laughs> You're going to be up here all the time. Just. <laughs> I got a question for you. What's your favorite fast food restaurant? Freddy's? Taco Bell. <laughs> what did you say? Did you hear the song? No. That was not a fast food restaurant. That was. That's Nationwide is on Nation your side. <laughs> He said you need that after Freddy's. That's funny. Okay. Okay, where do y'all go eat? You need to grab something fast. Yes. Gills? All right. Local. Local. I need, um, yeah. Lolita's. Oh. All right. All Unless right. That, that line is like 10 cars line, deep. No. Really? Just keep going. Oh, I don't know. Okay, she likes to go to a place called Fresca. Have y'all? Fresco. Any, any, Fresco. Come on, Fresco? get it. Right, babe. I like Fresco. I don't like it at it all. It makes me so feel I like I, I get something fast, but it's not going to kill me. So, yeah. There's something about fast food that, you know, you're nervous about, you feel guilty about. Uh, it's not the healthiest food, uh, just the way it's, most of it's prepared. Um, I like going to Chipotle. It feels fresher uh but it's a little more mexican than the place you like to go to but uh it's not true you can even you're just go hating on fresco you just don't you just don't want to go there i just don't like it so um you can go to a convenience store and get a bar right or a hot dog or sushi you know at a 7-eleven if y'all anyway if you get a hot dog you're gonna need nationwide just like i said <laughs> Yeah, so that's one way to eat, right? You can get something fast, you scarf it down, maybe you're driving down the road, shoving french fries in your mouth, hamburger, trying to talk on the phone and drive all at the same time. Uh, you can go in to Whataburger, grab something, eat it, go. That's one way of eating. The other way of eating is to go to fine dining, and it's expensive. 
and it's a lot more money and it takes a lot more time because it's not about the fulfillment of the food and, and, and feeling full as much as it is about enjoying the moment. And so the lights are just right and the music's just right. And uh, the servers that come to you know all these fancy words and they say the specials and tell you all about this stuff. It's about hanging out with one another in candlelight or whatever. Uh, it's about savoring the flavors and just waiting for the, the notes of the smoke or the marinade or the seasoning uh, to, com- you know, to pair with a drink yes, or yeah. cheese or espresso or, you know, like all these so many good things. Yeah. Before I met Robin, I had the fanciest place I'd ever been to was Red Lobster. Okay. <clears throat> Before that, Taco Cabana was like top tier. Yeah. So then I got Our married. Our first to date him was Chili's. <laughs> Chili's was the first date. She night. thought we were really going out somewhere fancy. Big time. <laughs> yep. Yep. Man. So we've come a long way, yeah, and now I know that way. you like just sit there and eat. Enjoy it. Well, you know, some, you, if you're not used to going to a place like that, first of all, you're like, sticker shock. Oh, my goodness, this food is so expensive. And it's because we go in with a mindset of fast food. Or, you know, we spend all this money and we're scarfing it down and we're not stopping to enjoy the moment. I remember in 1999, I went to France for three weeks and went around the country with some people and stayed in their homes and... Uh, it was the first time I'd ever had a meal that lasted two hours. And they would bring a course out, and you would eat it and talk. And then 15, 20 minutes later, another course would come out. And you would eat and talk. And you're just there for the moment. And you're just, the word I want us all to use today, and it's on your notes, is savor. To savor the moment. Which and is so counter what we do here, for the most part. We are like... In and out, like you said a minute ago, Efficient. driving, yeah. driving, getting some going, not thinking, just yeah, go, fueling go, go. ourselves and not taking in the moment, not sharing it with each other. And it, and it, it transcends from food to our life. And instead of uh, savoring our life moments, we're constantly looking to the next life season and not stopping and just enjoying the season that we're in. Even if there's tough times in that season, uh, what I want you to grab a hold of today is that with Jesus, we can be in that moment. For, uh, you know, Nikki and Emilio just had a baby. In fact, we had uh, four families or five families have babies all within two or three weeks of each other. And I uh, see Shay back there. She just had a baby. Uh, when, you're in a, when you have an infant, you just want them to sleep. You want them to eat, poop, burp, and go to sleep. And you want to, you know, enjoy them. But you're thinking, oh, there's so much, you know, like if I could just get, if I could just get sleep, you know, if we could just figure out this feeding schedule and, and diapers and all that kind of stuff. And then when they're toddlers, the, you know, you're trying to get them out of things, you know, they're, they're poking things and outlets and they're on the move and they're talking and they're loud. They have no idea about boundaries. And None. Literally one time when Avery was two, I walked in the kitchen and he was taking handfuls of sugar. He had climbed on the counter, taking handfuls of sugar and putting it in the toaster oven. Because, you know, <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> it's, and then those are the times that you're just like, It's like, oh, Lord, if we could just get just, to. What time is bedtime? Yeah. How soon? Yeah. So we, at that stage, we're like, man, if we can just, if they can just put their own, you know, seatbelt on. Or they can buckle themselves up in their carrier. Or if they could just put their shoes on. Or if they could. They could go to the restroom by themselves. Ah, that would just, we could just get to that point. And teen, par- parents of teenagers are looking back and saying, ah, oh, just savor those moments when they're cuddly and they're cute. When you and don't want to just, mm, and, they, mm. and they, yeah. Basically. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so always looking to the next thing. And then people that are further ahead, they're looking back on you and they're like, oh man, I wish I was still in that phase. Maybe not forever, but just for a week, you know, or, oh man, the perspective helps. Like just savor, savor the moments that you have right now. And then, you know, empty nesters look back at parents of teenagers and say, just be thankful they're still at home. 
and that you get to see them every day and you get to talk to them every day and even if they don't want to talk to you at least you can see them <laughs> and you can make an effort you know so every season of life there are reasons to be upset and reasons to be thankful and so what I want us to do as a church is just spend some time today savoring some moments yeah. with our family. Uh, Ann Voskamp wrote a book called 1,000 Gifts, and it's talking a lot about savoring the moment because we're tending to rush through and rush through and rush through and be frustrated and instead of turning it. And it's hard. It's always um, easier said than done, yeah. but that um, changing something from, you know, I'm grateful that there's muddy footprints on the floor because that means I have kids yeah. and I'm blessed with kids, yeah. you know, um, there's laundry because I have a family that's here, yeah. you know, which whew, I got to repeat that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I am thankful for laundry that he does. So yeah, anyway. I was about to say, um, <laughs> <clears throat> anyway. Yeah. Let's, so, let's move on. Let's keep going. Now he's going to get bitter. And you know, I, the other day I was doing a funeral. I was officiating a funeral of a two-and-a-half-year-old little girl who died from an accident. And while we were in the middle of the funeral, there was a baby crying. And I just thought, thank God that baby's crying. You know, just... The perspective of what you're in, a situation that you're in, is just so, uh, it's so easy to get lost in the, the rat race, the pace, you know, of always trying to get to the next thing. At church, you know, we have constant things happening here at the church, and as the leadership team, we have to stop and just savor the moment because we're always pressing in, you know, like this summer it was vacation Bible school and kids stuff and trips to Mexico and Guatemala and and then it was celebrating 20 years and a revival service and uh, all the stuff that goes into that and then it was launching small groups and uh, on this rock and all those gatherings and then it's and then it's at the movies and you know just one thing after another like what's the next thing got to keep going go 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 reach 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 push 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 and uh, we have to stop in that pace and just savor and thank God. Yeah. Yeah. So today we looked at some scriptures and wanted to share some scripture with you that is really pointing us toward Jesus and toward savoring the moment and being grateful. Um, the first one is First Thessalonians 5 and 18. It says, be thankful in all circumstances for this is God's will. For you who belong to Christ Jesus. Mm. It's awesome. Yeah. This one is my favorite, uh, Philippians 4 and 6. And it's my favorite because I'm prone to anxiety. I'm prone to getting, you know, a year down the road, five weeks down the road, whatever it is, and thinking of what's, what's the best and what's the worst. Yeah, what's and my happen? mind just goes and goes. But the Word of God says, do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Um, someone came up to me after the service and said, I just watched this thing. I just saw this thing that said that gratitude and thanksgiving is the counter to anxiety. Mm. And it just speaks so much to this and to savoring things, keeping us present, being grateful, thanking God for um, what's in this moment mm -hmm. and not rushing on to the next thing when i highlighted in and by and i think those words really help frame it when you're in something you can be thankful in the middle of something and it's by prayer you know that's that's the that's the ingredients of savoring that's the recipe yeah. prayer supplication with thanksgiving we're going to let our request be made known to God. Absolutely. Psalm 9 and 1 says, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I think it's important that we make the choice. It says, uh, I will, I will. That means we don't have to. It's not automatic. It is our choice to stop 
and savor what God is doing in our life and recognize what God is doing in our life. Count our yeah. blessings. I yeah. will give thanks with my whole heart. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 4, 15 through 16 says, All of this is for your benefit. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving. And God will receive more and more glory. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our mm. spirits are being renewed every day. Mm. How many of y'all feel your body dying? Yeah. <laughs> Aches and pains and all kinds of stuff. I pray that our spirit is being renewed. Yeah. In the midst of that, our bodies are dying. Uh, but this passage is really, I just really feel as a community, as promised land, that we gather around this idea that God's graces reach more and more people. There will be great thanksgiving. God will receive more and more glory. That's, that's our goal is that we, this is not about us getting any sort of accolades or recognition but us stopping. The, there's another scripture in Psalms that says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And that's really what this season is all about, is stopping to just savor the flavor of God's goodness in our life. What is God doing in your life that is being skipped over or ignored, or forgotten about? We want to stop. These scriptures that we're reading, none of them says, I will give thanks because my life is perfect. Or I will give thanks because God has fixed all of my problems. No, all of these scriptures say, like, in the midst of things, you know, in, the, in, in spite of things, in everything, by prayer, I will, I will, I will, I will. So I want us to just have this moment today where we recognize that God is moving. And have a Ruth's Chris mindset instead of a Kentucky Fried Chicken mindset. Uh, the local steakhouse here, a Cody's mindset, you know, instead of a Wiener Stencil mindset, okay? Uh, <laughs> no offense to any fast food. Come on, we all need it every once in a while. But when it comes to our heart for God and our and our possibility to just stop and thank God for what he's doing. I want us to have that patience and that stillness and just and just savor what God has done. It is because of Jesus and the work of Jesus. If Jesus hadn't died on the cross and been buried in the tomb and then rose on the third day, all we would have is just our, our positive mindset. Like, we're just, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. This is good no matter what. Like, it would just be us in and of ourselves trying to create a positive mindset. That is exhausting, and it's not enough. You know, it's exhausting to your, your spirit and your body to try to always be positive about everything. But when we trust in the work of Jesus that his resurrection from the dead began a great renewal for all of us, that this is not the end, what we see, and that he's beginning to show in little pockets here and there redemption yeah. and renewal. Yeah. It may not be your whole life. It may not be your, your whole bank account or, you know, whatever, but there's pockets in your life where God's renewal is popping up and showing. It's like flowers. Uh, and so, yeah. What we're going to do right now is we're going to take out this little piece of paper that you've been given, and we're going to give you some good background inf inspirational piano music, and you're going to fill this out right now. We're just Eric and I are going to stop. But, but Eric, you just need one one thing. What? Don't, right, don't don't fill over right by one this. right one Pick thing one down thing. in each category. If you didn't get a piece of paper, you can raise your hand. They'll help you. Write one thing about your home life that you want to savor in this season. Write one thing about your school or your work life that you want to savor this season. Write one thing about your body. You just talked about your body dying. You look in the mirror and you're like, oh, I'm too fat, I'm too whatever. There's something about your body that's beautiful. Write it down. Be thankful. Savor it. 
And then we gave you an open category there at the bottom. You can pick any other part of your world that you live in that you would like to savor. And so take some time now and do that. First, I was going to have everybody do three, and then I thought, no, I'll just do one. But those of you that are here multiple services, you have to do one for each service. Okay, everybody take your paper and hand it to the person on your right. Stop it. I'm don't just kidding. Listen. You don't have to do that. I'm just he kidding. just made everybody nervous for no good reason. Kidding. You're either nervous kidding. or you're proud. One you can two. fold it up, put it in your pocket, put it in your purse. Uh... And you can transfer it to your phone, take a picture of it, screenshot it, whatever. Uh, I want you to pray. Let, let this be your prayer guide this week. Let this be your uh, focus. Yeah. Just keep savoring it. Think yeah. about ways to savor it. You know, like, you know what's interesting about, uh, I've, I've learned this over the years, hearing people talk about coffee, wine, cheese, Tobacco, uh, espresso, uh, you know, filet, filet, whatever, barbecue, brisket. At first, you don't have the palate for it, but then you start learning over time how to start recognizing the different notes in each one of these, whatever they are, and. Uh, that's what I want you to do. I want you to start really taking the time and investing into this savoring uh, practice with your with what God's doing in your life. And, uh, and, and, and the more you do it, the more you're going to understand the, the depths and the value and the beauty of what yeah. God's doing in your yeah. life. Thoughts? Oh, that's so great. So we're thankful as a church. We're savoring 20 years of ministry here in San Marcos, and uh, it's really exciting. A lot of great things happened this year. I feel like we did really well at honoring 20 years and savoring that in Absolutely. August. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we baptized over 2,000 people in the last 20 years. We want to just stop and say thank God for that. Yeah. That's amazing. Amen. Amen. We've had close to 14,000 people. Uh, we have we have right around 2,000 members in our church, individuals in our church right now. But we've had over 14,000 come through in 20 years, and so you know, just it's just good to stop and just say, Lord, thank you for allowing me to be a part of what you're doing here in San Marcos, and uh, what a what a beautiful thing to be partnering with God and building His kingdom. Uh, we want to savor the word being taught here at Promise Land. We value the word of God. And we always want it to be a central part of everything we do. And uh, the foundation, really, the Word of God is our foundation. And so I'm excited to tell you that beginning next week, a week from today, we're going to be studying the book of John, the Gospel of John. And we're going to be doing it in a pace that we've never done before. We've done books like we did First and Second Timothy in eight weeks this summer. But we're going to slow down and we're going to study the book of John over the next at least six months uh, and really dive on a verse-by-verse -verse basis. We're starting next week because uh, some of you are trying to figure out what my sermon, oh, my yes. scripture notes are there. And uh, 
We have these books available. I think I heard we have 36 left, so they're going to be gone by the end of today, end of this service. You, but, they're uh, fairly easy to get, so nobody get too nervous. We're going to order a whole other batch of them if you don't get one. But they are a physical book. It is just the book of John. And on the left side is the scripture. On the right side, you can write notes. But I really, really love this format of studying the Bible because it's paper in your hand. You can circle things, highlight it, take notes on the side, annotations. But then on the right side, you can really just ask. Like, you'll see some of those are just questions, you know, questions that come up to my mind. Circling keywords, highlighting, underlining. Okay. So those, those are um, your, that's your very own journal and your very own pajama pants. Yes. Those are my pajamas. Those, my pajamas are not available in the foyer today. But if you would like. Uh, OK. So five dollars. Is that twinkle, twinkle? Little? Yes, I'm it like, is. What song is it? Okay. Oh, man. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> so, if you'd like one of those, $5. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to have to order a couple hundred more of them. I'm sure many of you are going to want them. Uh, so, if you don't get one, we will get it for you. But we're starting in the month of December, just as an example. We'll be studying... Chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. So we'll spend four or five weeks in those 18 verses. So if you want to study those, read those, dive into those, that's what we'll be talking about. We want to, we want to savor moments that we've had at the altar. You know, we prayed a lot at the altar. Lives have been changed. Uh, lives have been changed in the student center. Um, I'm excited about the, the elementary kids that went through Vacation Bible School this past year summer in uh, this picture you see on the screen is just one little sample of this was not babysitting uh, this was us presenting the gospel to these kids worshiping we had a full band in the mornings worshiping and just having these amazing amazing moments where we were worshiping God and these kids their lives were changed for eternity uh, and so we just uh, we just savor that moment um, we also want to thank God for the students, the junior high and high school students that went to uh, the WAVE conference, and Pastor Emilio and his team are just doing an absolutely amazing job with our next gen, next generation from birth all the way up to college. Um, so this is a group of students that went, and uh, this coming year we're going to be launching into uh, Wednesday night services and more exciting things on Sunday. Uh, we also had a group of 20 interns that began a journey, and the interns just began to really gel, and what was supposed to be just a one-month program has turned into an all-year, year-round program of internship, and we're just so proud. Those of you that are interns in here, parents of interns, we're so excited and proud about what God's doing in your life, and we just savor that moment that God is working out in these young people's lives and uh, they're they're establishing friendships right now they're going to last a lifetime and you can't you can't find that any other place that is authentic and so true just so beautiful uh, we want to thank God for what he's doing our Texas State students we've got so many uh, young adults that are active in our church the most we've ever had a few weeks ago, we had a young adult worship night right in here with all of our Texas State students, and uh, it was just a beautiful atmosphere of worship and prayer, and uh, of course, Pastor Emilio spoke a little bit, and just seeing the beginnings of a revival breaking out in our young adults is really, 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 really cool, and I want to savor these moments after First Wednesday. You know, we have these young adult hangouts. And uh, it's just really, really cool. So, how are you doing? I'm good. You just haven't said much, so I'm just checking. I'm just sure listening. You're... Huh? I'm just listening. You want me to take over? No. Okay. We want to savor God's voice. When God speaks to you, 
and you hear God's voice, you need to write it down. You need to do whatever it takes to remember it, voice memo, whatever, make a note. <coughs> Excuse me. And the <coughs> in the Old Testament, they would have like, they would build an altar. They'd like have a stack of rocks or whatever. Like this is the place where God spoke to us and savor God's voice speaking to you. Yeah, and I just want to say on that note, you know, when he says, Make note of God speaking to you. I think, and I'm just saying this, we've said it a lot before, but for new people, this isn't about, you know, hearing an audible, loud, booming voice. This is, you know, there's a quietness. There's a knowing in your heart when God speaks to you, a clearness about um, the next step, the next thing, and really savoring that. And um, it's really important. And so yeah, um, it's, we want to savor God's voice to our church as a whole as well. God says it's time to build. We want to stop and just say thank you, God, for, for speaking to us as a church. And uh, I'm going to savor the, the moments we had this summer up on the hill where Erica and I met with you. And we met, you know, there'd be like 50 to 80 people there. And we'd talk about the vision of the church and uh, just cast vision. I'll never forget those nights. 20 years from now, I'm going to talk about, remember we would gather up on the hill. This is before we had the event center, and this is where we're casting vision. And, um, I'll never forget those nights. They were special. I'll never forget combing through the commitment cards that you guys have submitted over the last month and looking at single moms or widow, widowers or, you know, uh, families, businessmen and women, just all the different types of people in our church. Yeah. And it, w it wasn't the amount really on there. It was just the heart. Absolutely. I think, you know, when we met with everybody, it was just people, y'all taking time out to be a part of something God's called us to and valuing that moment. And um, just, it was just really special. There's nothing like knowing that there's other people with you, you know, and getting that confirmation and so uh, I, I savor that. I'll savor that, those moments forever. Uh, just, it, it's just a special thing. So thank you. I want to say thank you to yeah. you for, for those of you that have made a commitment. And uh, as a thank you for those of you that have already made a commitment to the On This Rock campaign, we have a little gift for you, a little thank you gift. You can stop by the foyer over here on this side, the hub on your way out, and we have hats, shirts, beanies. You can take one, one for your family if you've already made a commitment just as a thank you. Uh, let's say on this rock or I'm committed, and um, we just want to thank you for that. Uh, 10 or 12, or 12 years ago, we sat in the other building, and we cast a vision, and we asked people to make a commitment. And in 2011. Him? Can I tell them what the numbers are? Tell, tell him what the... What if he said no? Oof, that would be awkward. Okay. But you'll let me tell him. Whenever. <laughs> so in 2011, we were getting ready to build or break ground on this property to build this facility. And it felt so daunting. Yeah. Like, I don't know if we're going to get it. I don't know. Who knows what people are going to be willing to, to go into mm -hmm. this with us. And so then... It was 126 families. 126 families in 2011. And they committed to building this worship center that uh -huh. you're sitting in, $144,500. Yeah. And we were blown away. Yeah. Like, this is amazing. Yeah, we're going to go for it. We're going to build a $2 million building with $144,000. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that shows you how much faith we had, really. It's a... Uh, you do what you do what you have to do with what you have, right? And yeah. and God was in it. It was totally a God so thing. Much. Thank God we all trusted Him yeah, absolutely. in the process. So now 2023, we've had twice that many families. Two hundred and fifty two families. Two hundred and fifty two families have committed. Twenty times the amount. That we did in 2011. 20 times, y'all, for those of Which you that is, what's don't the do number? math. 
$976. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yo. That's incredible. That's crazy. Literally, y'all. Very side note. This is why Robin doesn't let me up here very often. Yeah. But <laughs> whatever we were talking about. That is this not true. <laughs> for the record. I don't allow you or not allow you up here. We'll need a mediator later. Anyway, so <laughs> when we did, when we were talking about this vision and, and really what God was saying to us and, and talking about asking everyone to join us in this, I was like, what happens if we only, if people only commit $10,000? Yeah. <laughs> and Robin was like, that'll be a clear sign. We should not do this. <laughs> yeah. So we got more than 10000 More than 10000 Yeah. So. Exponentially. Yep, that's awesome. So yeah. uh, we are going forward with phase two, and uh, that's an exciting thing. The plans are being finalized. Hopefully by the end of this year, the next six weeks or so, we'll have plans finished for the for the event center, and then we're going to go right into uh, developing the plans for the parking lot expansion, a new road, uh, remodeling the student center. Uh, that's already happening. You might have seen, for those of you that have gone around different places, you might have seen stakes in the ground. Those are soil samples that are going to be taken. That they're going to come out and drill a 25-foot hole down to the ground and take a core sample out to make sure that all the development that we do in different places is correctly engineered. The foundations are correctly engineered. So you'll see that is happening. We're waiting on Hayes County still to finish the plat next door if any of y'all work in Hayes County, and would like to kind of push that through uh, <clears throat> legally and ethically and all of that, uh, yes, uh, you can help us with that. But hopefully by, the, by December, the, the property next door will be closed on, yeah. and man, we're going to have a party over there. We're going to have a lot of fun over there on the new side. Also, we've met with three potential general contractors. These are the contractors that actually do the work, hire the people, bring the bulldozers out and all that kind of stuff. We've talked to three of those general contractors and we're getting bids from them to really go to the next step. So we'll keep you posted on all of that stuff. But what I want to tell you and make sure you know before you leave here today is that you as a church, we as a church are going to model what we preach. We're going to practice what we preach and we're going to take we're going to tithe the money that comes in first. We're going to take our first and our best, and uh, we're going to build our, our orphanage in Mexico. And uh, we've already sent $50,000 in faith, and uh, we've, I've talked to the leader there in Mexico, and we've committed up to $200,000 for that particular project. Uh, so that's going to be happening in 2024, and I'm so excited, and I can't wait for us to take a trip down there and uh and cut the ribbon and it's going to be it's going to be a beautiful beautiful thing so why don't we stand to our feet right now and let us step into the moment with god and and the ultimate sign of recognition is when we take the lord's supper together as a church so uh, the easiest way to do this is to take the side off with the little bread and then you flip it over and you can open the side with the grape juice and Jesus stood with or actually he was laying there at the table with his disciples and he took the bread and he was like okay here here's the moment here's the moment where I'm giving you a new covenant this is the moment where you step into the story with me. You've been living the life of religion and of your Jewish faith and all that. But now's the time that we come into covenant with one another. This bread, he said, is a representation of, my, of Jesus' body. He said, my body. This is a representation of Jesus' body, which Jesus' body was the work. It was the effort. It was the sinless life that he lived, that he earned. It was all the things that Jesus did to live by the law, never sin, faithfully do what God asked him to do. I mean, all the things that Jesus represented was in his body, sinless and perfect. 
and it was a lot of work. It took a lot of effort for Jesus to do that. And so what he's saying is this body's going to be broken. He took the bread and he broke it. And he says, this body is broken for you. And he says, this is the new covenant. I'm trading what I've earned, which is eternal life with God. And I'm trading that with you. This is the covenant. If you take this bread and eat it, remember that I'm doing the work for you. That you're not going to be saved by the work that you do. You're going to be saved by the work that I do. That's Jesus' message to you and me. And so as we take this bread, what we're saying is, Lord, your work is good enough for me. And my work that I do will never be enough. But Jesus, what you're doing for me is enough. And we receive today, we receive the work, the broken body of Jesus, that he gave his life on the cross. He died for us to forgive us of our sins. So, Lord Jesus, we bless this bread right now, and we savor our salvation with you. We just stop and we just say thank you. We recognize you, Lord Jesus. We remember you today. Now, I want you to pray a prayer that I cannot pray for you. I need you to pray, and you need to pray. Lord, please forgive me of my sin. I repent before you right now. I surrender my life to you, Jesus. I am a sinner in need of a Savior. And Jesus, I recognize you. Thank you for your body. Thank you for your work, Jesus. I want it to be in me, around me, and through me. Take the bread now and eat. Then Jesus took the cup and blessed it and said, This is a symbol of my blood, which is shed for you. In Jesus' blood was the power, the grace of God. What, what is needed for our overcoming to equip you and energize you and prepare you for the work God has for you, that comes from the blood of Jesus shed so that we would not be bound by our sin, but we would be free and we would be healed and we would be connected to one another. That's what's beautiful about taking the Lord's Supper together is that it unifies us in such a beautiful way. So Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for the blood of Jesus shed on our behalf. Lord, thank you for willingly laying your life down for us. Today, we pray a blessing over this moment as we remember and we're so thankful, God. We savor your amazing grace, the power, the strength, the awesome, awesome spirit that is presented to us now because of your sacrifice, Jesus. We take and drink. You have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good. And every breath that I am made, I will sing of the goodness. Sing. All my life you have been faithful, yes. All my life you have been faithful. All my life. And all my life you have been so, so good. Every breath, every breath that I am made. Oh, oh, I will sing. Oh, 
church, if you believe it, let's declare it together. Your goodness is running. Your goodness is running. This is right. Surrender. Yeah, yeah. Your gun is running. 